Let's go! Miles Brennan, QB1 over TJ and Max. Let's take a look at the Missouri game. Miles Brennan gutting out of performance while his ribs were killing him without one of his best offensive linemen with some inconsistent supporting cast and a few coaching mistakes, which we will point out in today's video. All those things, and this dude still balled out. But is this performance enough for us to say that he should get his starting role back? So I need your help because obviously with film studies, we don't know the play calls. We don't know the checks. There's a lot of ambiguity with it. So let me know what you think on any certain play in the comment section down below. Correct me if you think I'm wrong on anything, but let's have some fun with this, Tiger fans. Miles, I believe in you. Let's go, baby. Boom, boom. Let's go. We see here it's second and 12. This is just incredible quarterback play. Look at this. So one key bit of context here is number 69, Charles Turner. I think this was the only game he really played. Was he starting left guard for Ed Ingram? So we move along here. Good pass protection. Miles throws a bullet. And that is what Eric Gilbert would have been to the LSU offense. All right, so... This is a zone read handoff. I don't know if Miles Brennan is ever going to keep this, but a little bit later, I'm going to show you where Miles Brennan's running in two separate ways was not good in this game and it probably would have won LSU the game. So first thing here, Chris Curry takes this carry and notice where the lane is here. If he cuts this way and feels it out, he probably could get a few extra yards, but this is my big problem with Chris Curry is that he just runs into tacklers. So this should have been for more yards than what it was. He just goes straight into guys when there was a clear cutback angle, but not here nor there. I don't mind someone just getting four yards. So blitz coming hot. All right, so let's see if there was a protection issue here. I saw Miles Brennan. Blitz is right here. Throw it to a wide open Eric Gilbert. All right? This is easy. If the blitzer is coming off the edge, and you know it's not coming from here, you know the middle of the field is going to be open. If not, just throw this ball to Chris Curry in the flats. And look, he's looking for it. Throw it. Just waits way too long here. Good play call against this blitz. And instead, and this is this is the thing about taking sacks, especially if you're a pocket quarterback and you don't step up, is that if you do not step up in the pocket, when you get sacked, you'll fold your lineman's knees, which is exactly what happened here. I'm shocked Austin Deculus was able to continue from that. So now we got a backup right tackle in the game. All right? Now, this is a problem LSU had in this formation last year. When you line up in trips, bunch, and empty set, they're going to blitz. It's so hard to pick up these blitzers off the edge, and it puts a lot of pressure on Dare Rosenthal, which you'll see a little bit later in this film study. But LSU slides the protection that way, Throws it to Eric Gilbert. Once again, a perfect play call by Ensminger. He trips and falls down. And LSU's aggressive on fourth down. Good play call here. And this is just freak of nature ability. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened with Eric Gilbert if Miles Brennan would have stayed healthy because they really developed a good rapport. And this is just such a well-designed play. Sell like you're running this. It helps that they brought two double A gap blitzers. Good pass protection here. Good route. Better throw. And that's just a really good throw. Well timed. Perfectly executed by Miles Brennan. We continue. Hand off here. There's nothing you can do about this. The one play out of the pistol and these slow developing running back plays. If there's a corner blitz, it's just. You know, there's nothing you could do. There's just nothing you could do. Nothing Chris Curry could do.
This is a good defensive call by Ryan Walters, who's now at Illinois. Okay, good job by Miles to buy some extra time. Finds his receiver, Racy McMath. Excellent quarterback play here. Look, when you feel this pressure is coming inside, just roll out. Just roll out. Now, you have to know these ends are sealed inside. Just roll out. Well done by Miles Brennan. Making a play happen. Good job of Race McMath giving him another option here. This is just excellent quarterback play. And we continue. LSU offense is moving. This is the best they've looked all season up to this point right here. Well done. Couldn't throw the football any better than that. Terrace slips on this card path here. Catch. He's got to drag that right foot at the next level, but it's a perfectly thrown ball. And in fact, you know you're in a groove as a play caller when you have multiple guys open. All right? Racy's open here. John Trey's open. They bring a heavy blitz. You sit in this pocket. You get crushed, and you throw a perfect ball like that. Excellent. Excellent. So we move on. We get a punt. We get a fake punt. We get an interception or a turnover on downs. Even better. First and 10. Miles Brennan. Good job. What a play. This is just... You know you're feeling yourself as a quarterback when you're making a play like this. Chase and Hines getting blown up here on a bull rush. They do a good job keeping contained. Just excellent. Just excellent. And this was really well done by Deculus, who disengages, but then he sees Miles rolling out, and instead of doing one of these illegal blindside blocks, he kind of shields this end right here from getting to Miles. And look at that. <laughs> he shields him just enough. Not quite Joe Burrow versus Georgia level crazy, but still a crazy play and a great catch by Terrace. Good job by here. Scott Woodward almost got cleaned out, but look at the mobility on athletic director Woodward. Look at that. Gordy Rush versus Arkansas did a better sideline play, that one-handed catch, but good job, Scott. So LSU blows a timeout here on first and 15 see what happens we're coming out of a timeout we've already blown two five minutes into the first quarter which is not good uh still good job right here by miles good job look sometimes plays don't develop your pass protection breaks down run through this gap if he's a better athlete he's getting through here for better yards but that's good you know, it's not a sack, but you, you're still here. And then we miraculously get up to first and four here, and there was a penalty or something like that. I don't know. But here we are, <laughs> first and four. They bring another blitz. Good job by Miles just getting it out. We live to fight another down, second and four. We roll out to the right. Good protection again. Bad decision by Miles Brennan. And there's a, a lot of angles of this play. Don't take this hit. And I believe this was the hit that Ed Orgeron said hurt Miles Brennan's ribs for the rest of the season. You've already got the first down. You know you're not going to score. And you're not even attacking the guy. You're just sitting here taking this hit. And it's just stupid. Run out of bounds. And Scott Woodward's like, I'm not getting close to the sideline now. Got to run out of bounds here. You're really hurting your team by taking this hit. Especially knowing what we know now. I mean, both of our true freshman backups played well. But still, if you take this hit and you're out for the year, well, we have seven more games with true freshman quarterbacks. This is a really bad decision in hindsight by Miles. A good decision to tuck and run. But still, so as you're going to see later, this was a play that we tried to stuff and win the game late in the game. 
and we never block this play well. Okay, our best receiver is the edge line blocker, and he does a good job cutting this guy down, but we just don't get enough push. This play is so tough to score two yards out. Just no push, no nothing. Second and goal, touchdown. I mean, this is just unreal quarterback play. All right? Now, Miles probably should have tucked and and ran this a little bit quicker. But still, look at that. This is the second touchdown he's thrown from this position up to this point in the year. He had one against Mississippi State where he's getting hit and throws a perfect ball to Terrace Marshall. Excellent. Look at that. You get a better angle of it here. And you can see he's kind of wincing in pain here. Slow to get up. And you could tell he's feeling that hit. But adrenaline's pumping, baby. Look at that. <laughs> ah, good job by Terrace putting his hand up in the air saying, I'm open. Well done. Catch. Score. We get the extra point. So, so far, Miles Brennan is playing a near-perfect game. All right, so we move ahead here to third and two. It's the first play of the second quarter. So, if it is the first play of the second quarter and it is third and two, this is essentially a red zone play. We have to have a good play coming out of the timeout of here on third and two. So, Missouri really challenged LSU. They, all game long, even though they kept getting burned, they kept crowding the line of scrimmage, which is what you want to do out of bunch because... If you're Liam Shanahan, you don't know if these guys are blitzing off the edge. You don't know if these guys are blitzing through these A-gaps. He gets a good snap off here. And Trey Palmer's got to catch that football. And, and look, this was part of the issue with LSU football early in the year. I, I don't understand why they're rotating so many wide receivers. Okay? We're We're, we're rolling. Why, why is it important for us to get Trey Palmer going, called off the bench, third and two, on the last few drives, John Trey Kirkland's in the game, I and mean, we just rotated guys in for no reason whatsoever, and he throws a perfect ball here. You have to fight back to the football and make this catch. Yes, it is at just a little bit late. It can always be delivered quicker, but it is third and two. He knows Trey Palmer's going to get separation because he's fast. And it is a little bit behind him. But you got to catch this. You got to catch this. So not the best throw. It's not entirely on Trey Palmer. Good play by the defender. Still, now we get a little lucky here. And we get the football back. Great play by Racy McMath. So now, first and ten, we get another drive. can't throw a football any better than that people now if miles brennan is a starter <laughs> ice water in his veins if miles brennan is a starter um he's not gonna have eric gilbert to throw that football to but maybe that's cole taylor maybe lsu runs more for a wide maybe that's Deion smith in that position there but still one more look at this dart and i love the play call here from insminger if they're going to crowd the line of scrimmage like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, let's attack them down the field. We just need decent protection. And we get really good pass protection here. And Miles delivers a perfect ball right there in the seam. Can't do it any better than that. Miles Brennan's playing a perfect game, folks. Say what you want about the Missouri defense. We are crushing them right now. B.J. Ojolari gets a strip sack. And now we're cooking with grease, baby. 21-14. Bad throw. We had him. We had him. First and 10. What does Insminger decide to do? Well, we're attacking down the field again. So we get what we want here. And what essentially this is is a 
fake bubble screen to John Emery, and that's what that safety reads right there. But instead of throwing it to Emery, after the pump fake, we're going to get Eric Gilbert going upfield. Look at all this. And not only was this a bad throw, Eric Gilbert gets hurt, taking a really tough hit there. And you could tell. Second and ten. Nothing's open. And this was a problem with Miles, and, and, and this was in my film study for the Mississippi State game. On these rollouts, he does tend to hold on to the football a little too long. And I, I can't see the routes. I can't see if anyone's open. But his anticipation on receivers coming out of their breaks is something that he really struggled with. But I'm fine with the throwaway. He's not a bad rollout quarterback, but he obviously rather plays in the pocket. And this was another case of that. So we roll out again. And the football is thrown a little late. It's still a really good throw. But if you know, if we can keep Racy on his feet here, he might be able to catch his football, turn up field, and get a first down. It's fourth down, good defense by Missouri. We kick a field goal, and we're up by two possessions. And that's good, right? We get a field goal, no interceptions, no back-breaking turnovers. So far, Miles Brennan is playing a um, an, an A game. I mean, it's exactly what we want. And if you guys want me to do a defensive film study, because this game shows all the problems with a 4-3 defense if you don't switch things up. If you want me to do a defensive film study on this Missouri game, let me know because legit, what Eliot Drinkwitz did a good job of was attacking the weaknesses of a 4-3 defense. Now... Let's get back to Miles Brennan. So, we see a linebacker out here on Chris Curry. This was a huge staple of the 2019 LSU offense. Let's rotate a running back out here and see what the defense declares. So, by having, and I'm guessing this is a linebacker, he's a bigger dude, by having a linebacker all the way out here, we know that they're going to be in man coverage. So, it is third and ten. Let's see if we can get somebody open. And we run this bubble screen. And Kayshaw does a good job making something out of nothing here. Makes this linebacker miss and gets upfield. Still not enough for a first down. You guys know how I feel about going for it on fourth down. We're not stopping them. So here we go. 156 left. We don't get anything going, but we do get the football first. So second and five. We're in plus territory. This is an adjustment I would like to see the LSU coaching staff make. Anytime you get in plus territory, know that you're going to go for it on fourth down. In modern football, you need to score touchdowns, especially against a team that's scoring at you at will. So understand that you know you have three more downs to complete this. That should open up your playbook even more. But instead, we run the same play. They do a better job of defending it. So now it's third and short. Ah, it's just a good play. You you expect Terrace to make this catch. We get man on man here. Fight back to the football. Make this catch. So we get the fumble recovery. Once again, this play just did not work. And as you guys know, we ended the the game trying to get this play to work. And this is the downside of a Miles Brennan quarterback offense. You can go look at the LSU versus Florida game um, where Max Johnson's ability to run, even though it's not an elite ability to run, that alone opened up this backside B gap or C gap or whatever you want to call it here. Because Max Johnson has a threat to pull it and run it with it right here, this backside in is just going to crash down and make this play every time, which is essentially what happens here. Right? So we get a few yards, but notice if Miles Brennan actually does keep this, 
He's walking into the end zone. But remember, he's playing with hurt ribs. He's probably starting to feel that pain just a little bit. Well, they run the play again, and it works, right? Well, you want to know why it worked? Finally, it was more Missouri's wrongdoing. They couldn't line up correctly, and that's why it worked. It's the only reason why it, why it worked. Cause Thus, a touchdown. So good job of LSU being set and ready. And really, honestly, there was no excuse for them to not be lined up. There was, It's one thing for it to be 38 seconds left and LSU hurried up to the line and hurried up and ran a play. Missouri, that's just really bad. But notice what Elia Drinkowitz did not do. He didn't burn a timeout. And this is a big problem with Ed Orgeron. He constantly makes this mistake. And I love Coach O, and I hope... We could fix this mistake, but he did it against Ole Miss. He did it in the 2019 LSU-Alabama game. You never want to burn a timeout deep in your own territory, especially on an early and goal down, because defensive second-half timeouts are so huge. Even though Missouri wasn't lined up correctly, Eli Draco had said, look, LSU's probably going to score anyway. It's second and goal, 12-25 left to go. Let's just give them the touchdown and preserve our timeout. Because even if you call the timeout, who's to say LSU isn't going to score on any of the other three downs after that? And if the, if you're not lined up correctly, just jump off sides. Because when you're second and goal from the two, the football only moves up by a yard. So Ed Orgeron and someone on the staff needs to fix that mistake because it happened. It happened. Um, and it happened a few other games. In fact. It happened this game, and I'll show you in just a second. And this was just such a big problem with the LSU defense. And in this game, LSU's defense actually led the SEC in a lot of categories. They led the SEC in three and outs. They led the SEC or were amongst the SEC best in pressure percentage, havoc, plays behind the line of scrimmage, tackle for loss percentage. Where they sucked was yards after the catch, uh, yards before contact. So in other words, the LSU defensive scheme was really, really, really bad, and the stats back that up. So here we go. Tie football game. Can we get something going here with LSU? 10.46 left to go. You can't throw a football any better than that, folks. You just cannot do it. Try you, you, Miles could try as hard as he could to throw a better football than that. Sometimes when Terrace is that hot, you just throw the football his way, and something good is going to happen. I mean, that is just artwork. Right over the safety said, part of that is due to the safety playing this ball absolutely horribly, but to just drop that ball exactly where it needed to be so here we go 38 31 another seven point lead let's put this into a two possession game let's go oh Jeray. okay so i know this is just a random first down but we're going to break down a lot of different angles on this play let's go ahead and run this at full speed and what you're going to see here is that Jure should have caught this, okay? He's got to catch that football. It's between your hands. You've had a good first couple of games. You create the separation against a good corner who actually made the game-winning play at the end. He's got to catch that. But the problem here is the protection. The one thing you are always taught as an offensive lineman is to prevent interior pressure first and let the outside guy go so what happens here is Missouri brings a blitz off the corner and corner blitz can be uh, they, they can be very effective against the run and the pass but they're not as effective as if they're coming if the wide receiver was closer this is a long way for a corner to get to the quarterback here now, that is Miles Brennan's blind side, and obviously you don't want him to take a huge shot, 
But the key thing here is to make sure these guys are blocked first. All right, so we roll here. And notice Missouri has, once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys. All right? And we got to block these seven guys with these five guys. All right? It's impossible to tell pre-snap if this corner is going to come. But notice what happens here is Charles Turner double teams this guy that Liam Shanahan's blocking. And Rosenthal gets a piece of number 18, but decides to pick up this corner blitz. Turner is late to get over to this B-gap pressure right here. And thus, Miles Brennan is hit. If he's not hit, more than likely this football is not so poorly thrown. It's probably a better thrown football if he has a clean pocket, because especially since there was so much separation here. So if this was communicated during the play, and Rosenthal is yelling, B-gap, 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 then this is on Turner. If not, this is on Rosenthal going for this corner blitz. we got to make sure this B-gap is covered. Now, once again, there's different protection schemes. There's slide protection. James Craig is coaching up things differently than other offensive line coaches would. Maybe Rosenthal's taught to pick up this corner blitz. Turner, who's not the normal starting left guard, that would normally be at Ingram. So this chemistry is not as good as it normally was. And George Munoz, who is back with LSU in 2019, he was huge in picking up blitz protections for this unit. This just has to be communicated better, and this just has to be picked up, because this is a first down. And this is bad. This is really bad, and that's the thing. I can't really criticize any one person without knowing too much about this play, but ultimately, we're fine if this guy is coming unblocked. We just don't want this guy to come through unblocked, and he essentially does. We're lucky we didn't get a hold there, and we get an incompletion. Jure still has to catch that, though, ultimately. So here we go. It's second down. Let's go ahead and run this play at full speed. Well done. Well done by Miles. So we want to make this a manageable third down, right? Okay. Good quick throw. But notice what happens here. LSU sees that the running back out of the flat is wide open. So remember that in third down. Good catch right there from Kayshawn. So here we go. It's third down. Let's go ahead and run it at full speed, and then we'll bring it back. Mm. So I've brought this up a lot in recent weeks. We've got to get better at throwing the football to the running back out of the backfield, and running backs have to be better at catching the football out of the backfield. And once again, there's multiple disasters that happen on this play. So different coaches have different philosophies regarding this. So, I never like a guy just coming unblocked that is on the line of scrimmage. I just don't like it unless it's a, 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 a design screen, which is what this actually is. This play is designed, and you could tell how quickly Miles Brennan throws his football out wide. The first thing is that there's too much air under this ball. Now, why is there too much air under this ball? Because there was too much pressure from this blitzing linebacker. So, if you're going to call this play, Torrey Carter needs to be coached, or maybe he was told to do this, to get a piece of this tight end. In other words, a chip. We need to chip this guy, because the key to this play is to get a clean throw out here. But because we don't chip it, Miles Brennan is, is, has to step back and put more air under this football. Now, if he's able to just throw this football out wide, John Emery catches it clean. So now Emery, who is expecting this football to just be thrown to him easily, this ball is lofted, and he tries to one-hand catch it, which he's trying to do while avoiding Nick Bolton, and he doesn't even catch it. 
The key thing here is also to secure the catch so we could potentially go for it on fourth down. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Once again, same play. And if you throw it, obviously, perfectly, he's walking into the end zone for a touchdown. But look, that's such a difficult throw. You're getting your best wide receiver. Terrace is so good in the slot. And you just get him. Perfect throw. Right in the middle of that cover, too. See here? Chase Hines, ironically, had really good pass protection. But it was so good, he knocked this defensive tackle into Shanahan and Turner, and it knocked both of them off. And Hines still picked this guy up. So, maybe not the best technique from Jason because it kept this defensive tackle up, but overall it was decent protection. And Miles, once again, threw this football under heavy pressure, just like he did against Mississippi State. A lot of his deep throws, even though they weren't necessarily him looking off a safety one way or the other or whatever. A lot of his best throws were under pressure. And look at where this ball is delivered. Perfect. Perfect. Good stuff. All right. So, let me run this play at full speed. And I want you to... I'm going to run it a full a few times, okay? Now, I want you to tell me whose fault this play was, okay? I want to run it a few times. Whose fault? Because, look, we're trying to throw the football quickly to our good receivers and man coverage, okay? Let's run it again. Let's run it one more time. Whose fault is this? Okay? Now, what I want you to do is, if you're watching this on a premiere right now, and I'm talking to you on the premiere, if you think it was the offensive line's fault, type O. If you think it was the running back's fault for the pass protection, type R. If you think it's the wide receiver's fault for not breaking off their route, type W. And if you think it was the QB's fault, type Q. So go on ahead, just... Let me know what you think on that play. And we will let you get one more. Because this play could have won the game. Whose fault is this on this play? All right. So here's a funny thing about film study. I don't know the plays. Okay. I don't know how the players are coached. And look, I'm not the sharpest. I'm not Brett Coleman. I'm not Ted Wynn. I'm not. You know, Brian Baldinger. I'm not some expert John Gruden film study. So these are just my best guesses. This right here is Miles Brennan's fault. So, once again, Missouri's Ryan Walters did a really good job throughout the course of the game. He kept his foot on the gas pedal. Even though they've been getting torched, he kept crowding this line of scrimmage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys come on a blitz, okay? So if seven guys are coming on a blitz and we have one, two, three, four, five, six guys blocking them and we have an extra running back to protect, you would like your chances as a defensive coordinator that one of these guys is going to get home and make a play, all right? And all three of our wide receivers are going deep. Now, how did Ryan Walters know that our receivers are going deep on first down? Well, it's because earlier in the game, we were attacking deep in the extended red zone on first down. So Ryan Walters says, look, if you're going to do that and you're going to run deep, I'm going to bring the freaking house. And he does. And notice what happens here. The protection is perfect. You could not ask for better protection and TDP gets a does a good enough job here to get a piece. But whose fault is this on this play? Well, it's Miles Brennan. First thing, if you're that far deep 
and a blitzer is coming this hot off the edge, this is a really difficult pickup here from TDP. Maybe he should have done a better job stalemating him before getting to Miles Brennan's throwing arm because he has thrown this ball up for man coverage like this. But the mistake Miles Brennan actually makes here is that he doesn't run, okay? And this is, if you're if Jake Peets is watching this very play, this is the benefit of having Max Johnson because Max Johnson would tuck in and run it here. You know who else would tuck in and run it here? Joe Burrow would because Joe Burrow did this versus Clemson. When Clemson would crowd the line of scrimmage, and blitz these exotic blitz patterns in this extended area right here, he knows that they're playing man coverage on the back end. So if they're blitzing all these guys, he knows that all he has to do is run through one of these rush lanes and you're getting 20, 30, maybe even a touchdown here. So notice, if Miles Brennan just steps up, tucks it, and runs it, because look, the receiver's not even open. You notice... The receivers are well covered because the corners are playing as if they're going to run deep routes. This is just really good coverage on the back end. If he notices this, tuck it, step up, run it, and it's easier said than done, right? Because you also could be taking a sack. But if you feel this protection and you see an alley, tuck it, sprint, sprint right through there, and look at all this space he has to run. And what a lot of quarterbacks do now, if they blitz you and they see that it's that hot of a blitz and they know that they don't have any underneath routes to check down to, they're just going to tuck it and run it themselves. If Miles could see this, and it's hard. Once again, this is hard, all right? And it's not the worst play here for Miles Brennan. And maybe you guys disagree with me. An incomplete pass here in the extended red zone is not bad. Not bad at all. But if you're throwing the football, a lot of interceptions happen on these deflections. We saw it against Mississippi State. Step up, sprint through there, and you're going to get an easy first down. So what happens here on second down? We get a good run, but Liam Shanahan gets called for a hold. All right. Another short running play. We miss Nick Bolton on a block. And what do we decide to do on third and 17? Well, this isn't Joe Burrow. This isn't LSU versus Texas. We decide to run a screen. And honestly... The screen was there. It was there. We had exactly what we wanted. <sighs> Problem, it just happens. The pressure just gets there too quick. Once again, especially with an immobile quarterback. Mm, let me see. Now nah, it's on Deculus, and I, I don't get a good early snap read on this footage here. Deculus lets this guy go too easy. If we get a better piece of this guy, we're throwing this football into this space. We're getting that block there, maybe. So here we are, good field position. Let's get a touchdown. If you're Coach Orgeron, let's get a touchdown. Let's make this a two-possession game. A field goal doesn't do you a whole lot of good here. Good RPO action here. Good throw and Kayshawn doing Kayshawn things. Very nice. We move on here. First and ten. Perfect throw. My read on this play was... This was on Kayshawn. You have to sell this pass interference. Number one, the ref just has to call this. He's grabbing his arm while it's in midair. Still grabbing. This is not, and a lot of people would say, well, this is arm fighting. This is not arm fighting. Is Kayshawn fighting this guy? No, it's it's him pulling his arm. And Kayshawn's just got to sell it. He's got to sell it. If you put pressure on this ref to make this call, 
It's just a bad call. It's on the ref, though. You got to make that call. Nevertheless, Terrace Marshall making good plays. Miles throws a perfect ball on a slant. We move on here. First and 10. And we drop a touchdown. Drop a touchdown and notice what happens here. We waste a timeout. All right. First thing, I don't know his injury status. I know Eric Gilbert, as we showed earlier, my, he got dinged up pretty bad early in the game. I think he was healthy because he was in at the end of the game. So if Eric Gilbert is this tight end, he probably catches it. And Miles does a good job, waits for the tight end to clear out, and you just got to catch that. And here's the problem. And there's another angle here. All right. Championship football. Tory Carter is trash talking. He's trash talking their best linebacker after he dropped a touchdown. Now, why? Why? Okay. Something else that needs to be coached as well is when you throw an incomplete deep pass. It takes longer to get back to the line of scrimmage and line back up because, obviously, the receivers all ran deep patterns. So because of that, we were delayed getting back to the line of scrimmage, which then ultimately led to us having to burn this time out. So not only did we drop the touchdown, we were trash-talking after an incomplete pass. We were late to get the play in, and in the second half of a close game, we burn a timeout. We're in the extended field goal range, but we really need a touchdown. We really need a touchdown here. Okay. Pass protection is pretty good. If you're Miles Brennan, you just got to tuck and, and, and just go as fast as you can here. Good coverage on the back end. Ah, the flat. That's where he should have gone. I really do believe more often than not, there's always going to be an open receiver. But because we just didn't have that chemistry coming out of the back of the uh, out of the backfield, you know that was a problem. We had a we had a lot of chemistry issues with the running back and the quarterback out of the backfield. LSU 2019, easy dink and dunk. If this is Matt Flynn and Jacob Hester, easy dink and dunk. Dre's open. Well, he's not open. It's kind of hard to see from this angle. Just hit your check down. Instead, we're rolling out. Maybe a better athlete gets to the outside, but once again, it's not the the worst thing in the world. So this is this is always a, the dilemma. And Cole Kubelik and other offensive linemen are better at breaking this down than me. But when a linebacker comes on a delayed blitz, you know, if he times it right, and he timed this one absolutely perfect... You know, Shanahan's got to pick this guy up. But this defensive tackle does a good job. And once again, this is one of the benefits of running a 3-4. And you hear me say this all the time. These delayed blitzes are just so deadly. Because notice, these. this is what's called a tight front. All right? So because this defensive tackle's in this B-gap, and this DT's in this B-gap, and this... Nose tackles in this A gap. Shanahan's got to worry about these three guys. Okay? So notice what happens. He gets caught up with this defensive tackle. What he should have done is once this got picked up by the left guard, he has to know pre snap here. And and once again, this is just so hard to block out of shotgun. And Aranda was really good at blitzing out of these three man fronts. But he has to know pre-snap, if this backer does come, he's got to pick him up. The one thing you never want is A-gap pressure. All right? Once again, we'd rather block these guys than this guy. But Bolton is their best linebacker, and he's coming in hot. Good defensive call by Ryan Walters. Good check down there from Miles Brennan. And notice... Torrey Carter drops a touchdown. We have to burn a timeout. Penalties. And we're forced to kick a long field goal here. 
Cade York is normally money from this distance. And it gets blocked. Oh, man, Booger took a boom. In the house? I'm Booger. Well, because she doesn't like the snow. Sorry. Dang it, Booger. So, you're probably wondering, hey, well, this is a defensive play. Once again. There we go. First and goal. So, now we get to right here. And you're probably like, wait, why are you... Why are you breaking down defense? I thought this was just an offensive film study. But what is the one thing that changes from this play to the next? I want to see if you could pick this up. What changes from this play to this play? All right. Let's see. I just want, I just want you to know. Let me know in the comment section or in the chat. This changes. LSU, once again, someone has got to tell Ed Orger on this. All right? It is second and goal. Don't burn timeouts. Don't do it. Just don't do it on defense in the second half of a close game. Okay? Because if you burn the timeout, the only justification that you can make is holding them to a field goal, which is highly unlikely with the way your defense is playing. But he calls a timeout on second and goal. First and goal and second and goal on defense timeouts are the worst. They are so not smart because you need those timeouts in offense. Because if they score, well, let's say they score and you get the football back, you go three and out, well, you're going to need those timeouts to stop the clock to give you another shot of winning. The cost-benefit analysis of this timeout is, well, we want to give our guys a rest and we want to regroup. And I get it, but that logic is just not sound. So coming out of a timeout on second and goal, guess what? The offense is getting to call another play, their best play, and they're able to substitute new personnel into the game that you don't know is going to be into the game. And what do they do? Well, they get you on this jet sweep motion. This tight end sells his route slowly, and they split it for an easy touchdown. The timeout's wasted. The timeout is wasted, and it's just suboptimal coaching. Remember, I showed you earlier in the half when the Missouri defense was scrambling, Elijah Drinkwitz can see that, but he doesn't burn a timeout because he knows that they're likely going to score anyway. Everyone say hi. I was coming to get her, baby. Well, come get her. Put her in. I wouldn't be on camera. Everyone say hi to Big. She's, she's hung tough in this winter storm. She's shaking. She's shocking? Yeah. Get her down. Get her down. Come on, baby mama. Quit booming all over the place. All righty, so look, you're Miles Brennan. You're a senior. You've been waiting for this moment your entire LSU career. You've got to lead us down the field and score us a touchdown, Miles. Let's win this game. Let's go. First and 10 on our own 25. That is unreal quarterback play. This is just amazing. One more time. Sitting in the pocket, waiting for these routes to clear out. Once again, I'm happy he stepped into the pocket. While he's getting hit, right in the ribs, was it an ugly duckling throw? But yes, it was, but you get the football to your playmaker. That is the play that we need in this situation. First and 10, we decide to run. Let's see. We're hoping Turner can get across the face of this defensive tackle. If he does, guess what? John Emery has a clean lane to run through, but this DT is able to pull Emery down. He goes down a little easy, but we still get a positive gain on first down. So second and seven here. See what happens. Once again, really bad pass protection, but it doesn't matter. Terrace Marshall is on fire. And sometimes when a receiver is this hot, you just throw it his way. 
So Ryan Walters, once again, this time he doesn't crowd the line of scrimmage, but he knows that these delayed blitzes have been getting home. And what he, what Walters teaches his defense is to hold up these blockers and let these blitzing backers go free, and they actually twist out of it. And this is where Dare Rosenthal probably should have stuck with this blocker here but instead, he lets him go and picks up this blitzing backer here, which is not probably the right thing to do. You want to not let this guy go. But Miles sits in there, takes another huge hit, throws the ball on the money. It helps having Terrace Marshall creating ridiculous separation. So Miles has to get up. We know his ribs are hurting. First and 10, what are we going to do? Throw it away. Very nicely done. Second and ten. What are we going to do? Boom. Go right back to it. Eric Gilbert. Money throw. Money throw. First and ten. Back to Terrace. Good play. And when your blitz pickup is not doing all that hot, just throw quick. Well done. And you see, when I, you see what I'm talking about? Even though Eric Gilbert probably should have picked this guy up right here, if you leave the edge guy unblocked, it's a longer distance for him to get home. So that's why it's okay if this guy comes unblocked. What we don't want is guys running unblocked through here. Okay? And notice he doesn't even get close. It's a good blitz call, but you want them... Coming off the edge unblocked, prefer preferably. Good run by Emery here. Good job by Turner. This guy attacks upfield. He gets a lot of penetration on you, but he seals him to the inside there. Well done. Good block down the field. Good run from John Emery. So now we're cooking. Clock's running. All right. Good throw to John Trey. Well done. Second and six. Perfect throw again. Now, did he score? I don't know, but Terrace did a smart thing there. Don't reach the football over the goal line and fumble your way out of the game. Okay? Smart move. If you knew that you were losing possession of the ball, don't try and reach out. So, if you are familiar with our channel, okay, you know that we've already done a huge film study on these final few plays, okay? But we're just going to do it again, all right? So, we have one timeout here. Missouri's up 45 to 41. There is so much more you can do with two timeouts instead of one, which is why you don't need to burn timeouts. I understand. We should have scored anyway, even if we had no timeouts, and I totally understand it. But you're losing opportunities for your team to win by doing something you do not need to do. But anyway... I digress. So remember, as we pointed out multiple times in this film study, this run with TDP has not been working. The only time it worked was when Missouri was not lined up correctly. All right? And we already know what's going to happen. All right? Your red zone play caller was Scott Linehan last year. This is why you brought him in. And LSU, as you guys know, was 0 for 10 on third down in this game. And Linehan had a really bad game. But still, it was bad that he did not adjust out of this. So, once again, if you... Number one, the one thing when you're handing the football off to a running back at a shotgun especially in short yardage, is that 
this running back doesn't have a lot of forward momentum, okay? It's different if they're at a pistol or you're reaching back to hand the football off because a running back doesn't have forward momentum going down the field. These guys are coming in hot and selling out on the run. So here, Terrace, we'd rather him be outside. So, number one, the defense is already keying run by formation, by earlier play calling, and by personnel. They know you're running the football when Terrace Marshall is right here. And in fact, he does his job. But still, because they're selling out this run, they're able to stop us before we even get close. Now, once again, because we don't have two timeouts left, LSU did the smart thing to hurry up to the line of scrimmage and run the same play and then call a timeout. So this was actually good management by Ed Orgeron to try and run this play again to see if you can score. If not, burn your timeout. But because you had to do that, what does the defense know now? Well, they know you're likely not going to run it again because if you run it again and you don't get back to the line of scrimmage in time, the game could be over. So the defense is like, okay, well, maybe they throw it here. All right? So this time they do something smart. We're going to throw it to Terrace really quickly. And it was there. John Trey Kirkland, who is the best wide receiver on the team in this aspect, he is the best at getting a rub on a defender. He did this for TJ Finley's first touchdown pass against South Carolina. What his job here on this play is to get a piece of the guy he's going up against and seal this backer who is keying in on Terrace Marshall, and notice he does it perfectly. But because Bolton's right here, he makes the game-winning play. Maybe Miles needs to loop this over Bolton's head. But look, we're running this to the near side of the field. There's not a whole lot of real estate. Miles throws this ball quickly. Nick Bolton makes a huge play. So now it's fourth and goal. All right. And that's just a good play to win the game. So if you're Miles Brennan, was this even the right throw? It wasn't. John Trey would have been wide open for the game-winning touchdown. Instead, he throws his football. Maybe it was a little late. I don't have the other angles for, for this game. You can go back and watch it, but either way, the defender makes a good play on it, and that's your ball game. And this is what led to the downhill spiral of the season. And here's a replay here. That's just a good play. And, and if you're in that situation, you probably, maybe that football could be delivered a little bit earlier, but still, it is what it is. So, um, you're looking at Miles Brennan's stat line right there, and obviously, you know, it's pretty good. He was accurate. There were some plays that could have been made with his legs, as you guys saw. The protection was a little bit spotty at times, but ultimately... Oh, what is that? The rest of the... French, French toast? Do you want to eat... Mom's going to throw it away. Do you want to eat it? When yeah, you see that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go warm it up real quick. Okay. Yeah, go warm it up. Okay. We got French toast. So, it's interesting. It, it, did Miles Brennan have a really good game in this game? Yeah, absolutely. But you also saw some of the limitations that he has in this offense as well as far as a runner. Now, does Max Johnson give you that much more as a runner? Well, he gives you something as a runner. Even TJ Finley is a slightly better runner. But as you saw throughout the course of the game, yes, it did help that he had Terrace Marshall. And, and, and Terrace Marshall was... Uh, was the best player on the team. But ultimately, to me, and, and, and this is just how I feel about Miles Brennan, I still think he could be the starting quarterback of this team. Obviously, he gives you a lot more as a thrower. 
he is going to place the football into tight coverage better than any of the other two quarterbacks. Some of that is just experience, but ultimately that is what he brings you offensively to the table. And look, plus there's also a benefit of having Miles Brennan as a starter because if he does get beat out, there is a more likely chance that he decides to transfer in theory. So, would I be fine if Miles Brennan was to come back and be the starting quarterback for LSU? Yeah, you see the numbers. You saw what he did in his first three games. You've seen the adversity he's had to deal with. You see how much he loves the program. You uh, Obviously, his current health, we don't know his current health. I would like to think that he is moving along nicely. The injury did happen early in the season, and he is an overall very tough player. So... Let me know what you think of this film study down below. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of defensive things we could break down as well. Let me know if you would like to see more of that have for lunch. You guys always want to know when I'm eating. Can you even see this? Look at that. French toast and some bakey wakey. Bug your food's down here. I can't give you none of this. So anyway, it is power hour. L-S-U, boom! Ah, ah, let's go, French toast time, let's go, Miles, let's go, I believe in you, Miles, let's go. Hey, bud. I got it, baby.